message affirmation this morning is God is here with me now. And today we wanted to, I wanted to talk a bit about living in the now, and that's a real consistent uh, thing that gets discussed in New Thought, because we talk a lot about living in the now, because we don't want to be uh, stuck living in the past or worried about things in the fa- past or focusing too much of our attention on the past, and we also don't want to be focusing too much on the future and, and worried about what's to come, because right now is the present. This is the time where we are, and this is the important thing to do, and uh, possibly a lot of you who are our on the worldwide internets, you've seen these wonderful uh, memes that are running around about, uh, you know, not living in the past and not worrying about the future, enjoying the day today. That's why they call it a present because, or the present, because it is a present. So even those people have been taking stuff from New Thought for years and years, which is really a wonderful thing. And so when we talk about this, this isn't to say that, you know, we don't pay any attention to what happened in the past. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're took some medication last year and it made you sick, you know, you don't ignore that and take it today hoping for the best because you know. And, you know, also we don't uh, set aside the things that we need to do today because we're worried about tomorrow. And as I was preparing for this, I was thinking of uh, all those situations and times in life when we've come across people like that. I remember years ago I worked in a clinic and uh, there was a woman who worked there with me and uh, she couldn't have been much older, maybe five years older than I was at the time. And it, it was wasn't much older, but I remember how this woman lived a life where she just deprived herself of everything because she was always worried and focused on saving for her retirement, saving for her retirement, saving for her retirement. And, um, you know, it would be a perfect end to the story if I could say that, you know, and then she got hit by a bus before she retired. No, I mean, that would be awful, but seriously, I don't know whatever happened. And, I, you know, I, I certainly hope that she retired and finally got to enjoy life. But the thing is, at that time when I saw this person, um, you know, it was a, a relatively large office and somebody was always having a birthday and there were collections for this and that and different things. And I, this person would just never participate because she was just so concerned about saving for the retirement, saving her retirement. You know, at the time, even then I hadn't been introduced to new thought, so I wasn't in the know about these things. But even at that point, I could see that, you know, gosh, you are just depriving yourself of any kind of joy today because you're so worried about tomorrow. And I don't know what kind of background that she came from. Maybe she had family who didn't plan well for retirement, and so she was just, you know, not going to be that person. But the point is that, you know, of course, we don't want to be silly and throw caution to the wind and and never, you know, make any plans for the future, but we certainly don't want to live in the future when we're here today. We want to live in the now, and we know that that is a constant thing that we need to do. As I was uh, researching some things when I was planning to talk about this today, it's interesting because when we go back, especially now, we've just uh, recently celebrated Easter and Holy Week, and we know that all of the things that Christ went through during that Holy Week and all of the challenges in all of that time, he lived in the now. He was just there in that experience. And, uh, of course, we know on Palm Sunday when he came into Jerusalem, well, that was a wonderful experience because he was hailed and people were throwing down their garments and, and the palm leaves to make a path for him because everybody was so excited to see him. And he was just in the now. And then as he became accused and as his disciples abandoned him and, uh, you know, as he went through the process, he just lived in the now. He didn't, uh, you know, point back and say, well, well, look at them, look at them, they, my disciples left me, or, you know, he didn't worry about defending himself against Pontius Pilate, and he didn't even hold it against him. He was in the now throughout that whole process. And I know uh, earlier this month we talked about the fact that he was centered. He was very centered in that. He was centered and living in the now. And we as human beings in our world today uh, need to be very focused on that and understand that living in the now is so important. We don't want to focus on living in the past. I bet a lot of you remember this story, but I was always, it's, it's always stuck in the back of my mind, uh, when Pastor Mike would talk about a counseling situation and, uh, a woman had come in and her husband had left her and she was, you know, in tears and she talked about how, you know, life was just without any meaning because the husband had left her and he was such an awful person and what was she going to do? How was she going to live? And so through the process, you know, Mike said, well, how long ago did this happen? And she's, well, it's been about 20 years now. 
<laughs> and we thought, well, my goodness, you know, it's time to, to move on. Let's live in the now. Don't be so stuck in the past. And I, I see that, you know, in life. Unfortunately, a lot of people, something bad happened or, or, you know, some person did something to slight them and we hold on to it so much and we let the past drag us down and so we don't enjoy today. And I think I've talked about that in the last weeks too, about letting go. And of course, that's a big tenet in new thought. Let go and let God. And a lot of that is just letting go of these slights and these hurts and these things that have happened to us in the past because by holding on to them, we don't get to live in the present. The past is holding us back. And so we're not fully enjoying lives. And we know that that's a big tenet here in new thought. uh, And we read it in the scriptures that, you know what, we are created in the image of God and God is perfect. Therefore, we're perfect. And we are meant to have lives of great happiness and great health and great prosperity. So we don't want to be in a place where we're emotionally or even physically sometimes held back by these things that happened in the past because there's just no benefit to it. There's no benefit to it. And we're depriving ourselves of these wonderful lives of now, living in the now. And we know that living in the now, God is here with us. God is here with us in this process, and he's here with us in the now, in this time, in this place. And so we need to grasp onto that and understand and enjoy that. And as far as the future, I was remembering uh, years ago when I first got into college, I was so excited I got accepted to community college. (laughs) But I went back to school really late in life, so it was a big deal for me. And I remember that first class I got and, uh, you know, I got the textbook and the, the exam was coming up. And so I just read through that whole book. Well, they were very expensive, so I was going to get my money's worth. But, you know, I just read, you know, before the first exam, the whole thing. And then the exam came. And my mind was so full of everything, I couldn't focus. And, you know, life is like that, too. We're supposed to live the chapter that we're in. I I think uh, I had used this analogy before about the marathon runners. You know, run the mile you're in. Don't worry about the finish line. Don't worry about what's way up there. Run the mile you're in. And so, uh, you know, when that exam came, my mind was so full of everything, rather than focusing on that chapter like I was supposed to, I did very poorly because... You know, I'd gone all the way. I had rushed ahead. I was so worried about the, the, the future when I just needed to live in that chapter that I was given. I needed to be in that chapter that was assigned. And we need to do that in life. We need to live in the now. This is what we're assigned to now. Worrying about the future or fretting about what happened in the past just robs us of enjoying the now that we have. And so we need to definitely hold on and understand that God is here with me now And I'm meant to live in the now. And that's what we're meant to be as these children of God. So when you get a moment this week, and hopefully everybody does get to take some time and set aside for some personal reflection, ask yourself, am I focused on the past? Am I worried about the future? And if you answer yes to these, say, okay, what can I do? How can I get myself to just understand that I need to live in the now? Because the now is what's important, because the now is what's happening, and the now is life that we're living. So if we are focusing too much on the past, some hurt, some slight, something, you know, my mother did this when I was a child, or my father did this, or, you know, my spouse did this to me, this horrible things. So many times when we talk to people, so many people hold on to all this old stuff, and it just robs them of their joy and happiness. So rather than being stuck, held back by something that happened in the past, just let go, let go. And definitely, uh, you know, don't rob yourself of all your joy today because you're planning for your future because now is where we're at. Now is where we're living, and now is the important time to hold on to. And the good news is that we're all changing our way of thinking. We're all changing our way of thinking to understand that living in the now is the important thing. And the good news is that we're all becoming better at living in the now. Very important. The good news is that we claim this simple truth. We can change the way we look at life the way that we look at others, the way that we look at the world, and the way that we look at God, and we can unite ourselves and everyone else and unite ourselves with the power and the grace of God in that we have tremendous strength and tremendous overcoming power. So we definitely have the power to overcome these things in the past. We have the power to overcome our worry about the future and just live in and enjoy the now, which is very, very important. So as you start your week, uh, hopefully get up, look at that mirror in the morning and say, you know what, God is here with me now. I'm starting this day. I'm going to live in the now because that's what's important. That's where my joy is. This is my present to myself.
now, today. All right, I'd like to invite you to pray with me. Eternal and loving God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to live in the now. We thank you, Lord, for guiding us and directing us, for letting us let go of the past, anything that may be holding us down, bogging us. We thank you, Lord, for knowing that the future is in your hands, not ours. We thank you, Lord, for freeing us so that we can live in the now, so we can enjoy the present and every single day. We thank you in the name of faith, hope, and love, and we claim these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.